I'm gonna start this video quite differently to normal by actually apologising for a few silly mistakes I did. When I announced this video, I rather publicly said that it happened at the Cock Beck, which is a tributary of the River Wharf, which runs through East Yorkshire. It wasn't until I actually started researching it for myself that I rather awkwardly realised that none of the evidence we have suggests it was at the Cock Beck. Similarly, I announced that the Battle of Hatfield Chase was at Doncaster, and then realised that none of the evidence suggests it was at Doncaster. And this goes to show that we can't be lazy historians, we can't simply regurgitate whatever we read on in books or in the internet and assume it was true, because we're merely propagating historical myths without proof. We have to engage directly with the evidence ourselves, and this is what I've done in this video, but I digress. The Battle of Winwade is one of the most significant battles, not just in Anglo-Saxon history, but in British history. It effectively marked the demise of King Pender of Mercia, who is one of the most famous and greatest kings of the period, but also symbolically marked really the end of Anglo-Saxon paganism and the triumph of Christianity in Anglo-Saxon Britain. Now, with that in mind, let's look at this part of Yorkshire's hidden history. Churches, battles, kings and queens, factories and big machines, castles, forts and in-betweens, the stories that are told. But first, cast your minds back to my previous video, The Battle of Hatfield Chase. Now, if you haven't watched it, I highly recommend that you stop this video right now, then go watch it, because it's really important in establishing the context of the period and some of the people who appear in this video. In that battle, King Edwin of Northumbria was killed and defeated by the army of Penda of Mercia, and the Kingdom of Northumbria was then split into its two constituent parts, the Kingdoms of Bernicia and Deira. Cadwallon ap Cadfan continued to wage war against the Northumbrians and would not be defeated until the Battle of Heavenfield near Hexham in Northumberland in 634. Northumbria was then reunited under a man named Oswald, but still presented a threat to Penda. Around ten years later, Oswald was killed and dismembered by Penda at the Battle of Maserfield in Shropshire in around 641. This split the Kingdom of Northumbria again, and it marked the effective overthrow of Northumbrian supremacy in Britain. As I mentioned in the previous video, the historical record for this period is quite unreliable and we often have direct contradictions in our main sources, so I've presented quite a simplified series of events. Oswiu, or Oswig, succeeded his brother Oswald as King of Bernicia, and throughout the years after the Battle of Maserfield had on and off conflicts with Penda. In 655, Penda, with allies in North Wales and East Anglia, as well as the Kingdom of Deira, invaded Bernicia and waged war on Oswig. We're not entirely sure of the cause of this particular war. Some argue it was motivated by religion, as Penda was a pagan and Oswig a Christian, whilst others suggest it was more about Penda wanting to establish dominance over the other kingdoms and prevent the reunification of Northumbria. Whatever the reason, Penda ended up besieging Oswig in the north of Benicia, and Oswig attempted to broker peace. We don't actually know whether Penda accepted this peace deal, as two of our sources directly contradict each other, but whatever happened, Penda marched southwards and encountered Oswig at the Battle of Winwade. We really have three main sources for the battle. We have the Venerable Bede's Ecclesiastical History of the English Peoples, which was written in 731. We have the 9th century Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. And finally, we have the 12th century History of the Kings of Britain by Geoffrey of Monmouth. Bede's account is probably the most useful. He tells us that this battle was fought close by the River Winwade, which at the time was swollen by heavy rains and had flooded the surrounding country. As a result, many more were drowned while attempting to escape than perished by the sword. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle names a place as Wingfield, and Geoffrey of Monmouth's account names it as something I'm not going to try to pronounce because I'll get it wrong. Winwade is an Old English word comprised of the words winnen or win, meaning strife or fight, and wade, meaning shallow water or ford. This likely suggests that the term Winwade was given to the river after the battle. Geoffrey of Monmouth mentions Penda as having crossed the Humber, which suggests that the battle was at least in either South or West Yorkshire, but considering that Geoffrey also wrote that Britain was colonised by descendants of the Trojan War, we do have to take this with a grain of salt. Ultimately, we cannot know for sure where the battle occurred. Tradition has ascribed it to the Cock Beck, but apart from the similarity of the place named Winmore nearby, which may have the same prefix as Winnen or Win in Winwade, 
we can't really be certain. Some have proposed the river's air and went as locations for the battle, but as I said, in cases like this, we really don't know. What we do know is that King Pender died and his much larger army was defeated by Oswig. So what were the consequences of the battle? Well, although the first Archbishop of Canterbury was in 597, King Pender was viewed as the last great pagan king of the Anglo-Saxons. He was really viewed as the last great obstacle to the Christianization of Britain. With his death, both literally and symbolically, came the end of Anglo-Saxon paganism. As well as the end of the Kingdom of Mercia, its power effectively crumbled, and for a brief period, Northumbria resurged as a dominant dominant force in Britain.